Hi, I'm Tim Clemmer, and today's topic is the perils of screen scraping. So let's get to it. So let's start with screen scraping, and here's the setup. The, our players in this little enactment, we have Janet, is a new user of My Money. My Money is just the hottest, most viral application on the internet today. And it's a financial app. And Big Bank is the bank that Janet does her banking with. And it holds most of her accounts. We start with Janet downloading the app onto her phone, maybe onto the desktop, or logs into My Money. And My Money has a couple of prompts. Give me a name, first name, last name, date of birth, whatever they want to do to create an account. Once the account is set up, here's where the magic starts. My money says, Janet, for me to work, I need to connect to your banks and then I will download some information and then I can present to you whatever it is I present. And so who's your bank? Janet will say, oh, I have Big Bank. And then, great, we know Big Bank. Give us a user ID and password to Big Bank and we'll go do our magic. Janet then enters her user ID and password and gives it to my money. And now starts the whole screen scraping process. And let's take a look at it. Ready? Screen scraping's little secrets. Here we have Big Bank's account summary page. And if you look, good golly, Miss Molly, there are lots of little pieces of information here. I see that Janet has a checking account with some withdrawals. She's got a savings account. And oh, goodness gracious, she's got a mortgage. All I need is a couple of pieces of information, and I can do some great analytics and sales. So here's mymoney.com. Mymoney.com understands what Big Bank's account summary page looks like and knows exactly where these 10 pieces of of information are going to fall on the page and so boom checking savings and mortgage all fly into mymoney.com mymoney.com churns and does its magic and now all of a sudden janet is presented with these wonderful web pages or you know it's on her phone beautiful graphs great graphics giving her all sorts of information and intelligence about her financial situation. And she is ecstatic. She is like, boy, am I glad I became a user. And then all of a sudden she starts getting ads for better mortgage rates. And they're talking about her mortgage and she's saying, wait a second, how did they know about my mortgage? I only thought they were going to collect my checking and savings account. All right, so let me just step back here for one quick second. Mortgage, admittedly, is a bad example. A better example would be your kid's data or your personal data. And keep this in mind now, that every page that Janet has access to at Big Bank, MyMoney.com has access to at Big Bank. They have her user ID and password they can log in and get anything that she has access to. One little point here. If you're using a payment app um, and the payment app is only asking for account information, like a debit card or a credit card information, they're not doing this. It's only when they asking you for or only in those situations in which they ask for user ID and password. Once they collect user ID and password, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. So we have another website. We have another entity out on the web that has Janet's credentials. And we're just fingers crossed that these guys understand technology and understand security. And I will just tell you this, early on with many of these financial technology firms, security is in last place. The first place, first and foremost, is focusing on the functionality of the website, of the app itself. Okay, so we've shared our credentials, not great. Two, as you can see, 
there's unwarranted access to private data, personal data. We don't know, uh, or we do know that, you know, mymoney.com is going to collect anything and everything that it can that's on the website. And if that profile has date of birth, address, social security number, salary range, what have you, any answers that you gave to questions, mymoney.com now has access to that information. And finally, this is not intuitive, um, and I probably need to be, you know, technically savvy to realize this. But if Janet deletes the app from her phone, MyMoney.com does not stop collecting her data. They will continue to collect her data until she changes her password. It's not, as I said, you don't think about it that way, but that's the fact of the matter. Now. I've let you in on a little secrets about screen scraping. This is only half the story. In reality, mymoney.com has only, you know, seven to 15 developers and they are booked solid creating and focusing on this intuitive interface that they have and they're building an app they're building the web pages they're doing all this analytics they ha don't have time to build screen scraping programs these programs that will whip these rip these uh, 10 pieces of information off a of big bank's account summary page they don't have the bandwidth to do this for 16,000 financial institutions in the united states so what's the answer well there are companies out there do do this for a living. They're called aggregators and aggregators have all of these scripts that go out to the banks and rip data off. All they need are credentials. So mymoney.com has a contract with aggregator.com. Mymoney.com feeds aggregator.com. Here's some credentials for big bank. Aggregator.com goes out to big bank. Hey, I'm on the account summary page grab that data, grab as much data as we can for the savings, the checking, the mortgage. Oh, by the way, I know how to get into their profile and personal details. I've got it all. And I will give my money only what they ask for. Now, typically aggregator.com has set up an API and says here are all the pieces of information that we collect and we may not be able to collect all of it for everybody, but this is what we have. MyMoney.com has to understand that and ask for it. So if they don't ask for it, aggregator.com is not going to give it to them, but aggregator.com will continue to collect it. So where are we now? Another company has Janet's credentials. Another company has Janet's data, and they may have more data on Janet than MyMoney.com. And if Janet asks MyMoney.com to stop collecting her kids' accounts, Aggregator.com, you know, MyMoney.com may stop asking for it, but Aggregator.com may still collect it. And then lastly, we have that websites change. They change all the time. And when they change, nine times out of 10, screen scrapers fail and they create bad data. And this is only a problem when you're talking outside of the top 20 or 30. If they change, the, screen, the aggregators are on that, the screen scrapers are on that instantly and they get it fixed in hours. If you're way down the chain, you're at bank 10,000, it may take weeks to get fixed. And if mymoney.com is to credit reporting and they're getting bad data from you know, this 10,000th bank, that's a problem. Then Janet is getting a bad credit based on erroneous data. And it, the, the actual fact is either for those weeks that we're waiting for that to get fixed, they're either getting no data or bad data. And bad data is the worst. Last thing I wanna, share with you today is aggregator.com the way they work is their whole business model is they take this data they'll sell it to mymoney.com they're there as a partner for them but also what they do is they collect all this data they anonymize it and then they sell it out to whoever wants uh, you know analytic data or data to do analytics on 
So you should be aware that your data is now all over the place and being bought and sold and traded. So now the question is, what's the solution? The solution is open banking. You should always check with your financial institution. Do they have direct connectivity with uh, financial technology firms? You should check with a financial technology firm. Do you have direct connectivity with big bank, etc.? Because open banking provides the five following standards. User control, which means you, the user, have control over what gets shared with the bank, protecting your private data, protecting certain accounts. You have control over who has access, tighter security, transparency, and traceability. I hope you found this episode informative and educational, and I appreciate you listening. Thanks so much.